Sweet Talk is a weekly 20-minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. This podcast is part of our continuing outreach efforts and the format is conversation. We're having conversations with businesses, professionals, entrepreneurs, community agencies, and in all cases, difference makers. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. So subscribe today. Take 20 minutes and hear from people living in your community who are making a difference in your community. It's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. This is Jason Batalden with Continuing Education Workforce Training. And uh, I bet some of you are out there going, hey, Jason, where's Paul? Um, Paul's having a very busy day today and wasn't able to join us. So he trusted me enough to pick up the show and hopefully carry the slack. So if you're a huge uh, Paul Dickey fan for the show, you're just going to have to endure uh, Jason for the day. Hey, uh, with that being said, though, I do want to talk about uh, this is um, we're getting ready for the new year and the new year at Continuing Education Workforce Training. uh, What that means for us is new catalogs. So our spring classes are now open for registration. And so we definitely want to make sure that you uh, check out that catalog if you should be getting it in the mail here. It's probably next week. As soon as next week. If not, you can always check us out at cetrain.isu.edu. Uh, that is cetrain.isu.edu. And go ahead and click on all our programs offered or catalog. And you can see all the new exciting classes we have offered for the spring semester. Now, into the business at hand, though, uh, we got the self promotion stuff out of the way. We've got another episode to our Every Student Has a Story series. Um, If you guys are uh, more than casual listeners to the show, you'll know that I think this will be our sixth episode or fifth episode. Um, And so we're excited about that. That means we have Sharice Brown back on the show with us. And so we're excited to have her uh, here today. And she has a very special guest. And so we're just going to jump right into it um, and hopefully find some inspiration and some encouragement today. Uh, listening to uh, the story of the student. So, Sharice, welcome to the show. And and who do you you. have with you today? Today, we have some inspiration with us. Uh, Okay, so I I started at ISU when the START program was on cohort 21. Mm -hmm. And um, Ryan Young is our guest today. And he was one of my very first students as the STAR director. So, Near and dear to my heart is my first cohort, number one and number two, because Ryan just speaks from his heart and he loves people so much. He loves start and what, what it did for him. And so when I approached him, you can see he's just such an emotional, <laughs> like, lovey, lovey guy. And he, he changed the, the feeling in our cohort from, you know, that, that new uncomfortable, anxious feeling to you're loved here and you're all going to do great. And I support all of you. So I'm just really lucky to have him come and tell his story because it's, it's pretty incredible. Right on. Right on, Ryan. Welcome to the show. I'm excited to hear your story. So kind of start out. Uh, how did you get in start? How did you find the program? How did you get started? Um, uh, when I first started, I was, I'd been working for probably about, um, I worked like 14 years as a CNA and the, I ended up injuring my back. I was working up at the, up at the hospital and injured my back one day when I was off and it was so bad that I couldn't go back to what I wanted to do or what I was doing. And so I decided that I would, um, go back to school and it's, it's hard, especially, I mean, being the time, I think I was like 48, 49 and it's hard going back to school. And so I um, went in and talked to vocational rehabilitation to see what they could do for me. And they said, well, first, if you got to do, go in and do the start program. And that's when I first heard about start. Um, I came in and started um, and looked at it, enrolled in it, and got going in it. And so um, probably one of the best decisions I've made in my life, um, education-wise. And so. 
I, I got to tell you, Ryan, you, you, you may, you were true when you say going back to school is hard. Um, but I'm kind of curious a little bit, where did that, how did you kind of come to that decision uh, just in the circumstance? <laughs> I, and, and I mean, I, uh, God bless you, sir. We're close in age. Uh, I'm assuming yeah. just by what you mentioned. And I, I, uh, I work at a school. I can't imagine going back to school. So there says a, a certain about about your character and about the quality of person you are that that has already got me impressed. But uh, how? Where did that decision come from? I first, first of all, I, I I enjoyed what I did, but I also knew um, part of my issue was the fact that I was, um, you know, I was to the point to where. My kids are all grown. They're gone. They're out of the house. Um, I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to be able to go fishing and go out and do things. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, that was a joke. And yeah, uh, grocery bills and uh, gas, to, you know, fuel fuel prices get in the way of that uh, yeah. dream, don't they? Right. Yeah, they do. And so I that's when um, when the injury happened, I, I was pretty ticked off for uh, probably about a month. And, I, and it took me probably about a month and a half. And I just started going, you know, I was forced into um, the job I did, uh, CNA. It was just a backup plan. And I decided that I, you know, I really wanted to go into something that I really, that I've been wanting to work in for a long time. Um, it hasn't been easy. Um, the program is is challenging, very challenging. I've had my fair share of sitting down with Sharice and, <laughs> and crying at times, frustrated, irritated, <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's been worth it. I've, um, I finally, I'm going into electrical instrumentation technology. And the reason why is the fact that um, I'm the kind of person where my brain I work mechanically. I'm able to take things and put things together in my head, build them in my head and take them apart. I haven't been able to get to that point yet with electrical, but I'm getting there. And um, the electrical component is something that I really, I with all the new technology coming out in that industry, I really want to be part of that. Very cool. And, and so I wanted to be part of that. And um, yeah, in you know, and to be able to uh, be understand what's going on and be see things change. So. Very cool. So you you kind of knew you you know you had to get out of doing CNA, but you also had this uh, a different uh, to work differently. It sounds like, or at least in a different yeah. field, uh, applying different thoughts and, and behaviors and actions. So there you go. You, you walk into Voc Rehab, they say start, and, um, and then all of a sudden, uh, there you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was the first, what was the first day like? It was, did you um, get through it okay? I, I did. I was a little skeptical because of the fact that I w- I, I've always been terrified to, to go to school. Um, uh, I, I went to school at Weber State for a little bit, um, and my biggest frustration was the fact that sometimes you're sat down and you're, you're force-fed so much stuff that it's hard to keep up, yep. and the and you don't have, um, well, I guess a better way of saying it is the fact that I was skeptical because of the fact that once you get in there, I'm not, I've always been scared of being able to do it. Can I do it? And that's one of the, the big pluses about the START program. Um, I know that in, in talking to Sharice, they've, they, and, and seeing the program as it's set up, they, they're, the people that they have uh, where they're at right now in the program are there for a reason. And um, Charisse, I believe, was specially made for this position. Sorry. <laughs> um, because um, I don't care if you go into the program and you don't believe in yourself. If you believe in the instructors, 
um, especially people like Cerise and Don, and um, as well as Mike, they, they'll help you to the point to where you're going to be able to believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. And I had never felt like I was good enough um, to do, you know, to do school, to do things like that. And they really have a, an ability to put people at ease and to help them to know that number one, they are, um, they can do it. Um, you are capable. Right. And so probably one of the greatest things that I've learned from the program is the word yet. Um, and, and when I say yet, it's the fact that I don't understand it yet. Right. We've got to give ourselves time. Right. And so right. um, that's what I really like about the program. So on that end of stuff. So. Well, and, and I guess, Sharice, I, I kind of, just want to maybe bring you in just a little bit in the sense that, um, and I, and I, what a credible comment, um, Ryan, just on that whole piece about finding people to believe in you. Cause sometimes, um, you know, you can't, right. And, and, and so I, I guess Sharice, from, from your point, um, you, you were first to the, this is your first year as director of Stark. You run into Ryan, um, I guess that was kind of a talk to, I guess, a little bit, share a little bit about him coming in and recognizing his, his uh, the potential and the power and the talent he had and being able to help him kind of identify, see that in himself too. Yeah, I think that's something we see in each of our students is their, um, they don't see their potential, right. right? They're caught up in their own negative thoughts or their own, uh, the words they've been told, things that people have tried to label them as, you know, growing up or in, in younger years. And Ryan was one of those, you know, he was told by people that you can't do this, you're not smart enough, you're not going to mount anything. And he fought against that. He, hmm. I think he probably still fights against it to this day. A little <laughs> yeah. Bit. yeah. And so like, if I see that and I'm I, like, my sensor goes off and I zone in on that and I'm going for it. Like that's what, that's where he needs to work is he needs to believe in himself because we can all see what he can do. Right on. And it's not just like, it's not just him being smart, but he's got the ability to empathize with people and he's got great communication skills and he's got great presentation skills. Like he's got all of these things, but when you don't have people that tell you you're really good at that, Mm-hmm. Or, hey, tweak this a little bit and you're going you're gonna to get it just right. Like just that time and attention of paying attention to where he's at, what he needed, how he was feeling. I think that's, that's one of the gifts of the START team is we're able to do that in a way that, that uplifts and helps them to, to see deeper within themselves. And you know what? Credit to him. He's put in a ton of work. Yeah. He didn't give up on himself when he wanted to. And when people told him, what are you doing? He hasn't stopped. So he's got the grit. He's got everything that it takes. Mm-hmm. And we just, he just needed some people to rally around him and we're right. a good rally team for him. So Ryan, do you remember when it kind of clicked for you? Uh, do you remember when that moment was, I suppose, with the apprehension and then also, you know, the interaction right, with Sharice, I'm sure with the other people involved in the program, the other students, mm-hmm. but can you kind of remember when it all of a sudden maybe that first moment when you kind of came to the realization, wait a minute, I, I not only can I do this, but I am doing this, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I don't know. Uh, at the first, probably the first week or so, probably, probably about the third week, I start really, it really started clicking for me to the point I understood, stood things and there's to to what I could become and with um and you know it's I believe also with the program especially is you get out of it what you put into it and if you're willing to put all you can into a program whether it be the start program or whatever you're going to get a positive out of it and as if if you put into it what you what you should um and i think that that it really helped me to hone some things um and in in the fact of understanding what i could become and what i could do and 
um, like I said, it would, you know, I think a lot of it has really stemmed from the leaders that are in the positions that they are. And so, but yeah. So where, where are you at now? Where are you at now in the process? What, how far are you along in your, your education or are you done? I am, I am, I'm not done. I'm actually going to be walking this um, on December 18th to get uh, a, a certification in electrical instrumentation. My goodness. And then I will be going on to get my associates. Um, one of the things that uh, they, um, Charisse has talked about, um, oh, give me a second. <laughs> you take all the time. Um, you're killing me, Ryan. I'm not supposed to cry on this. You're getting me over Sorry. and over. I'm trying not to, but you're doing um, great. You're doing so good. The, you know, after um, I've had, they've had to slow the program down for me a little bit. But the thing is, here's the, the thing about it is, is um, in doing the programs that I've done, I've, I've always learned that you've got it. And this comes down to what I was talking about. You get out of it, what you put into it. If you are here every day and you're here and you're doing your work and you do, you stay after, if you're struggling with things, you stay after and you study and you study and you study, you, they'll, things, doors will open for you. Um, Mm -hmm. And I saw that in my first, my first semester, I really, uh, in school, not in start, in school, I struggled. But um, because of the fact that I worked as hard as I did, it helped me to, um, it, helped, it was a lot easier for them to say, you know what, let's redo that, but let's, uh, let's uh, slow the program down for you a little bit. Um, I mean, if you can go at that, the speed they're doing, do it. But if you need to have it slowed down, you've got to put in the time and the effort and they need to see that. Um, it's like today I've, I've been here all day working on math and getting some stuff done that I'm trying to get caught up on. I'm not saying that you're not, not I'm behind, but there's, um, I've learned how to, yeah. as per se, to bloody the knuckles, if I can say that in a metaphoric way. Uh-huh. And, um, and so one, um, also on another aspect, I just enrolled for uh, the third semester of electrical instrumentation. And um, it was a challenge. It was something that I've, I've uh, had to I've sat there and thought, you know, am I good enough? Am I good enough? Am I good enough? And it finally comes down to this, the factor of one of the things that I'm not going to go the rest of my life wondering whether or not if I could have been, if I could have been. Um, What if I could have done it? What if I, you know, um, and I, to me, um, and sometimes you've got to be real with yourself too, in the fact, I know I went in and talked to my my student counselor to help me in the program so that I understood what I was facing. And I had to ask him the, the blunt and bold question is, um, <laughs> where do I need to work? Where do, you, where do I need to improve myself? And he just said, you know, he was blunt. He was up front with me. And, but yet, um, I knew where it was coming from. If I'm going to succeed, I've got to do that. And it helped me to see, okay, my path starts here. And, um, sometimes we have to be wise enough to ask for that. Yeah. Well, it does. So you've got a, a graduation coming up here. Uh, here in the middle of this month, correct, for your certificate. Um, And then you're on track. Can you just enlighten me a little bit? Because uh, I need some education. 
what what kind of field um, will these skills in this education take you into? What where does this thing? Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm doing electrical instrumentation. It's being able to program um, all the little um, computerized components on like uh, a work line where they've oh, got okay. rollers and that kind of stuff working. Um, it's working with electrical cars and programming things to where you're able to do stuff. It, well, it's working with cars too, because some of the cars have become more and more computerized and, and going in and working with the small microcomputer type stuff. Um, and and well, then- That kind well, of references what kind of what you talked about earlier was, is kind of being on the cutting edge of some of this technology and some of the fields. So yeah. that's part of the appeal, right? Is is they probably haven't created all the different fields where this type of skill can be used yet, right? Yeah, yeah. And Brian, if, if I may, do you remember talking to me about why you wanted to get into working with cars like that? Um, I do. Um, and my wife is differently abled. My wife has um, cerebral palsy. We've been married for 27 years now. And I would like to be able to help bring about some of the autonomous vehicles. Oh, very cool. And because uh, you give somebody an autonomous vehicle, it gives them freedom to do what they need to do and when they need to do it. And there's, um, I have, that's part of the reason why I'm going to school doing what I'm doing is because I want to be able to help with that. My, so, and to see and to know, um, be able to help bring about those, um, how do you say it, that kind of technology. Sure. You know, I appreciate that, that perspective. I, I guess I've always thought a little bit about, you know, autonomous vehicles, ease, comfort, uh, lack of congestion on the roadway, that type of thing. But uh, just your perspective on what an autonomous vehicle provides someone who doesn't uh, necessarily have the ability to move, uh, transport themselves very easily. It yeah. opens up the world uh, to them in a way that hasn't been opened open before. That's fantastic. Oh, man, that's fantastic. So yeah. and I, I read an article a while back, a gentleman down in California tried the new the and this was years about five six years ago but the guy tried the new Google autonomous vehicle I believe it was and the guy was blind and he said you know if the people next to me driving next to me knew that there was a blind guy driving next to him they'd probably freak out but they they went down to McDonald's and came back just to try it out and see if it worked and you know it's like anything it takes time to work out all the kinks. Yeah. Um, I think we're on the way there, but it's going to take a little bit. So, Well, that I tell you, that's pretty cool. Thank you. Hey, I don't know if you heard that was the timer. I don't know if you guys heard that. I'm sorry. That was the 20 minute timer. We ran out of time. Uh, Ryan, I um, thank you very much for sharing your story. I got a feeling there's a lot more that we didn't get to in that 20 minutes, but um I got to tell you, just from my perspective, you encouraged me today, um, just with the the courage it took uh, um, that I can only imagine uh, to start school again and and to then create a plan and to push through that. And so, um, in uh, where I'm at today, I'm finding some encouragement just in your story. So thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah. Hey, Sharice, there are a lot of other people out there that are are wanting their start um, to get on with. The, do you like that? I, I should, that was very good. Very good. <laughs> I did one good thing today, or at least I think so. Anyway, um, um, how do they do that? I'm going to have to write that down. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, so you can call up here and talk to me, 208-282-4359. Uh, or you can get on our webpage, www.isu.edu forward slash start. Uh, or let's see, you can stop by the third floor of the RFC building and come and visit with us. And we'd be happy to, 
to help get you on a path that, that you feel like is best for you. I mean, you listen to Ryan's story. Like I have the best job in the whole world. You do. This is you what do. I get to do. And so to Every watch day. their growth and their transformation is, I mean, it's just phenomenal. So Very I'm good. Ryan, I'm lucky to know you, you know, that I love you and I'm yep. just so happy and Thanks. proud of you. You're in the arena every day. You don't let anything keep you out of the arena very long. So my hat's off to you. Thanks. Ryan, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, your privacy is your own, but if somebody wanted to reach out to you and just say, hey, Ryan, I, I, I'm in a similar situation. I'd like to have a conversation. Would you be willing to reach out with them? If they oh, reach yeah. out to you, would that be okay? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's up to you. I mean, uh, Sharice gave all the contact. I'm sure she'd love to put them in contact with you if that's what they're interested in. So yeah. um, if you've got an email or a Facebook, you could also share that. But uh, I don't, I, sorry, I should have cleared this with you before we started the podcast. You're, you're I don't sorry. want you to put all your contact information out there, but if you want to talk to Ryan and maybe uh, just maybe have a conversation with him and cause you hear something similar uh, in his story, that's to yours. Um, I'm sure Sharice would definitely like to put you in contact with him. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Brian's going to make you feel good about yourself, your life and motivate you to do the star program and get your dream on track. Very good. Very good. Well, with that being said, uh, please, if you'd like to reach out to us here at Continuing Education Workforce Training, uh, the best way, of course, is to email us at cetrain at isu.edu. That is cetrain um, at isu.edu. Um, also, just check out our website. It's the same thing, cetrain at uh, cetrain.isu.edu. Um, I'm going to try giving the phone number. I'll probably mess it up, but it's 208-282-3372. Um, you can reach out to us the old-fashioned way. And I'll just throw this in. You can always come in the RFC building and come see us on the first floor. How's that, yeah. Sheree? And come <laughs> the door. Come see all of us. Come see us all. Yes. All right. Well, thank you guys for being on the show today, and thank you thank for listening. You.